the UFC has been pretty stale lately, so let's count down the top 10 most exciting active fighters. Coming in at number 10, it has gotta be Islam, and I hope this isn't too controversial, because Islam be getting slammed for being boring, when that is just not the case at all. Him versus Bobby Green, him versus Dan Hooker, were all wild finishes. And I know, I know, I hear you, they're journeymen. So what about him versus Volk 1? That was an electric fight. But I get it, he was hanging on for dear life at times, he got knocked down, I understand. But you trying to holler at me about Volk 2? A wrestler getting a head kick knockout against Volk? Alright, alright though, Volk was on short notice. But him versus Dustin, I mean come on now. Dustin coming off a win, that was supposed to be an Islam win via lay and pray, but nah. Islam sat there and was winning on the feet to eventually putting Dustin to sleep via darts choke. And not only that, but this dude gives us a lot of moments on the mic as well. And I think the only thing holding him back is the fact that the UFC is making him wait until October to fight. And with him just being a fighter that's hard to book in general, that's why he is this low on the list. But before we jump to the Crimson Chin at number 9, it'd be a good time to explain that this list will only be featuring active fighters, so no Hamzat, Connor, Chandler, Usman, and also this list was stupidly hard to make. So before you rage at me, give me a break and just let me know what your list is down below. Coming in at number 9, we got, we got the Giga Chads, Giga Chads, and Drew Dober, and honestly, he is just the Michael Chandler of unranked fighters with every single fight being a banger. Him versus McKinney was likely the craziest round in UFC history history, and he's even been paired up with the big names like Islam, Bobby Green, Moicano, Steamroller, Riddell, Benil. Not only is Drew the king of ESPN+, Plus, but he is among some of the most active fighters in the UFC, and even recently put out another classic, and even though he lost, it was so exciting, and he continues to be the ultimate test for all at lightweight. The only real negative is that Drew's ceiling is around number 15 to 12 in lightweight, which there's no shame in at all because it's lightweight, but fights like him versus Chandler, Dustin, Justin, Max, they're all bangers that will just never happen because he's just not at that level. Number 8 is easily the weirdest fighter in the UFC, but potentially will go down as the most gifted. Before we get there, if you want to make sure Bilal Muhammad never becomes UFC champion, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and let's get back to it. So number 8 has got to be Michelle Pereira. And Jesus Christ, I don't want to sound like an idiot couch coach trying to break down what he does because how do you describe the indescribable? I can't believe he fights at welterweight as well as middleweight. This is someone who can be matched up with dozens of fighters and every time he has gone in the octagon, he has done something that makes everyone think they're watching a literal video game. His fight against Eeyore was pretty good, and it was also a pretty good tell that he's going to steamroll everyone until he gets to the top 7 or so. And I think the most similar fighters to him are Johnny Walker and Yuri, who are known to be exciting as well, but when they lose, it's pretty brutal, and that's definitely going to be the main concern with Michelle. But him against an Usman or a Kosa or a Hamzat, it's still a certified banger win or lose. But in a division that is top heavy, like middleweight, Michelle has been a huge shot in the arm and him typically being in the prelims of pay-per-views or on the early main card he's someone that can spice up any event and his wild style might get criticized at times for being dumb and risky but from the perspective of a fan i mean come on dude you can't tell me it's not hype all right number seven and i hope we aren't gonna piss off too many people but let's be real we probably already have but i got drickus at number seven now chill i know Listen, I was like, Drickus, what am I talking about? Drickus can't be on a list like this. And then I went through his fights. You got Darren Till on there, Brunson, Whitaker, Strickland. These were all finishes, except Strickland. And that fight, although it was sloppy and low level, are we going to complain about a nasty brawl that could have gone either way? 100% Oxygen Duplus, he seems to only know how to go forward with no thought of caution. It's pretty dumb, but it makes for exciting fights. And whether you think him versus Rob was a fluke, which to be fair, Rob did look really bad. And Izzy added some manifestation to that win, it does seem like Trickus vs. Anyone is a certified banger. Like, this dude has the belt and also is pretty awkward but funny on the mic too. And that always helps add the necessary spice we all love to our fights. Like we got the clueless and righteous bozo versus the anime and dog loving legend, which is going to make for a real, real interesting matchup with Izzy on the decline and Trick is seemingly on the path to enter the realm of the greats with Ali, John Jones, GSP, Anderson. This is a joke. Heading on over to number 6, it's the most hyped up and coming fighter in the organization today in Diego Lopez and dude, him versus Ige was crazy. I almost feel bad for leaving Ige off the list after what he did, but even Diego taking the weight and opponent changes to the night of the fight, it was absolutely bonkers that that's the type of thing that only happens in movies. But not only does Diego do insane shit like taking fights on 4 hours, but also he fights like a maniac. Him versus Ige being one of the most exciting fights on the card and even looking at previous performances, they were all first round finishes, which is only 
Al coming on short notice versus Ivalov, where he looked like he had locked that submission in, and that would have been the end of the fight for sure. And I think what makes him even more exciting than others on this list is the fact that he's clearly getting better, and his last fight there were seemingly cardio issues at the end of the third round, which may have come from dealing with the weight and opponent changes, but the improvement of his striking and his insane jujitsu it has created a nice storyline for him, as well as storylines between him and other featherweights, between Ivalov, Volk, Ilya, Max, and Emmett, who is like the goofy dragon in this, but shout out Emmett, he's entertaining, but realistically, I think Diego has to fight either Volk or Emmett next, but nonetheless, Diego has been one of the most exciting fighters of the past couple years. Alright, let's jump to number 5, and we don't gotta beat around the bush here, it's Dustin the Diamond Poirier. This man has gone from a fan favorite to a legend in the past 5 years, and I even have a whole video here ranking all of Dustin's past fights, but Jesus Christ, has Dustin Poirier ever been in a boring fight? Is it even possible for Dustin to put on a bad performance? Even when this dude loses, it's great. The fact that he said he's got one more fight left and it'll be against one of these guys, it's insane. And I think we've taken him for granted because there's going to come a day where Dustin is going to retire and we're going to remember that no one else has been in as many wards as him. No fighter of this style will ever be as good as him. He is truly the best brawler the UFC has ever seen at the lower weight classes and entertains both on the mic and in the octagon, going out and showing everyone that regardless of who you put in front of him, he's going to entertain. Him versus Islam was one of the most poetic fights we've seen and he made it dirty, he made it ugly, just as you would expect. And even even if he never got the belt, at least he owns Michael Chandler. And man, I almost need to see that fight again because there's some real spice on that one. I feel he hates Chandler more than he hates Colby and Connor, which is wild, but he really turns into a great A comedian when it comes to roasting Chandler because that dude hates him. But it's Dustin at the end of the day. He has reached a level where he can fight whoever he wants, whenever he wants. So let's just move on to number four. And it should come no surprise to anyone that, that these two are back to back in number four being Justin Gaethje. He's basically Dustin except more wild and wins are less guaranteed. He did beat Dustin second time, but when Justin loses, man, it's bad. And every fight he's been in is wild. And earlier in his USC run, he had some bad losses. Well, man, oh man, were they exciting. This dude used to be Chandler with an even lower fight IQ. Than, and even now, he's pulled back a tad bit to become more disciplined. He still remains one of the most exciting fighters in the USC. And unfortunately, it seems as though his retirement is bound to come within the next two years as he did separate himself from title contention following his awesome loss to Max and we'll get more into that later but Justin did not need to take that fight he would have got the title shot against Islam if he just sat out but nah he decided to stand on business and fight Max and got 50 45 while getting knocked out considering what he's done in the sport I think we'd all like to see him get one more title shot but him versus Fazeev is likely to happen again him versus Moicano could happen his legacy is cemented and will always be the standard for exciting fighters. Coming in at number 3, we got Yuri, and this dude has been a character since day 1, entertaining in and out of the octagon. From black magic, to gathering his chakra, to reading the five rings, Yuri is about that life in every way possible. You can tell just how much fighting means to him, from him standing outside arenas the night before, to him saying he will never fight again if he doesn't improve. He doesn't do it for the money, but he does it for glory, and his fight with Rakic featured one of the most innovative defenses we've ever seen in the octagon, with Yuri employing a strategy of defending strikes by allowing them to hit his head, it enabled him to have one of the best knockouts of the year and of USC 300, and yes, he's fallen short against Poetan twice, but Alex seems to be entering the air of the unbeatable, and I think everyone knows him versus Jan needs to happen. We need to see this war because Yuri fights with reckless abandon, as he has done against Glover and Dominic Reyes, and that fire still burns inside him, and he helps create this mob mentality come fight week that's always super fun to take part of and get invested in. All of that, as well as the fact that him versus Glover is arguably the greatest fight of all time, like deadass, the most insane fight that will ever happen in the UFC. Slotting in with number two with no surprise to anyone is Max Holloway and I mean like I mean come on like what what like what 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 i would cut three years off my life to relive this for the first time again dude this was a spiritual experience where it seemed like the fight community united in a hive mind as we experienced the peak of what fighting is the definition of what got us into the sport what it means to reach the most impressive accomplishment there will ever be in the world in becoming the bmf champion and him versus cater being one of the most insane things we'll ever witness live all of his past fights are hype it's max holloway need i say more and coming in at number one to the surprise of no one is Alex Pereira. And you guys have said so. And honestly, can you blame anyone? This dude has owned the past three years. And him versus Izzy was one of the biggest moments in the UFC. Even when he lost. And with the rumors of him at heavyweight, there's a chance we might actually have a star on the level of Connor and Khabib once again. So if you enjoyed this video, check out the ranking of every Connor McGregor fight ever. And don't forget to leave a like, subscribe. And we're just getting started. We're going to stay consistent. And I'll see you in the next video.